Because I need some new shooters, bro. Need new shooters. What do you think the going rate is for a shooter? If you want someone to follow you around all day, how much do you think you got to pay them? That's like basically armed security, basically. So what? I guess there's levels to the game. Yeah, there's levels. Yeah. There's like Bubba with the gun that isn't that well trained, <laughs> but he'll follow you around for what, 25 an hour? And then there's guys that are like CIA. Type. I've met like ex Navy SEAL bodyguards that are uh, bodyguards for like some of the biggest names. If, if, if I said the name, we'd all know it. And they're just like wearing a nice suit. They have the sunglasses and they're just calm as can be. But if someone walks up on them, these guys have popped many a people, and they're not afraid to <laughs> pop you too, you know? Yeah, yeah that's what I need, dog. Like, like when I get on, on, I, that's what I need. I need it. I'm coming like that. I've played around. I mean, I don't think I'll ever go anywhere with security. I don't know. I don't think it does me any favors. I think part of the allure of my channel is I'm not threatening anybody. I'm not coming with a battalion of armed snipers with guys wearing ghillie suits hiding in the bushes you know yeah. i just come and i go into your life and i see what it's about i feel like if i had security it would change the vibe of the video maybe a little bit yeah it would you know because i've done it with rappers like we were out in texas with peso peso and uh he had two armed security yeah and even though he was bringing them into his people on like this this project area like they were kind of like eyeing it up and at one point like a car pulled up and started talking shit and one of the guys pulled out their pistol and i'm just like oh god like would it have escalated if these guys weren't here? Right. So, like, just as much as their protection, it also escalates things, too. Right. Hey, yeah, uh, the last thing, though. Hey, how tall is Mexico T, man? I seen you. Bro, he look like he's my height. No, no. He's, like, what, 5'10", maybe? No, oh, okay, he's big, dude. He's a big boy. And also, <laughs> Mexico T is one of, one of my favorite people I've gotten to meet on this journey. Like, he's the type of guy, he walks into a room, he says hello to the janitor, the camera guy, the main guy, the secondary guy. He doesn't care who you are. He's very polite. Like some rappers, when they get to that point, it's so like ego. Like, you know what time it is. I don't talk to nobody. Like, he's very down to earth, and I think he's gonna have a lot of longevity in the game. Cause to have longevity in the game, you gotta be easy to work with. If you're a douchebag, if you treat people like shit, sure you might have a cool hit song or two. But if you want album after album, people have want they gotta want to work with you. And Mexican OT, he just has that charm, dude. He just yeah. has that hospitality, but he also is gutter too. Like. I looked at, he, he showed us pictures of when he was like nine throwing up bees and shit. And like, <laughs> he was running the streets as a little kid. So what he says in his songs, like, he's like the, the perfect mix. He's a gangster rapper, but he's also country, but he's also a little bit of gutter in him too. And he's so versatile. He can go to any genre. He, it's kind of like Post Malone a little bit. Like he could yeah. rap, he could do country, he could do alternative. So I think sky's the limit for a guy like that. And shout out my guy, Mexican OT. Yeah, yeah. Hey, last question before we get out of here, man. Like, if you had to pick one person, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter what business they in, like, who would it be to interview right now? If, if God gave them to you today, who would you interview? Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Mark Cuban's been on my list. Yeah, Mark I want to do Day in the Life of a Billionaire. I want to see how he rolls. Mark Zuckerberg would be interesting, especially as that guy. He started doing jujitsu and training fighting, so I think um, there's I connections know. there. I would say, here it is. I want to talk to the president of El Salvador. Now, have you seen... So they they went from the most dangerous country in the world to the, one of the safest. All these MS-13 guys were running the entire country. And this president said that. They went door to door. They rounded all these guys up. Did you see any of the TikToks of like them rounding up the mask security of all the MS-13 guys? No, I didn't see that. They cleaned up the whole country. And so I want to go into one of those prisons and talk to the MS-13 guys. I want to go talk to the president who's also big into Bitcoin, and that's one of the things that he's yeah. bringing to the country. So um, I want to mix up with like an international piece. So I think the president of El Salvador, if you watch Mixtape Trappers, yeah. give me a call. <laughs> real, man. I think it can happen, man. All the motherfuckers can definitely happen. I have a connection. So I got, I got some uh, hired guns in Mexico that have connections to El Salvador, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to make it happen. That'd be crazy. You already know what the fuck it is, man. DJ Jerry, a.k.a. the voice of the streets. It's the motherfucking Mixer Trappers Radio, man. Tommy G. What's hey, happening? shout out on my honkies. Peace. <laughs> March 7th. March 7th, pull up. Oriental Theater, bitch. <laughs>